uh, many of you have come across that too, where maybe something you were doing wasn't working and you had to adjust your own behavior to get back on track. Yeah. Has um, anybody have a, a story they want to share in that regard? Well, for me, working in sales, something may work for you for a month and then the next month it's not going to work for you. Mm -hmm. You have to constantly readjust, get out your comfort zone and try something different. Uh, so that that's definitely a big part, you know, for that specific career. You definitely have to continue to try new things. Yeah. You have to build a thick skin in sales. Oh, yeah. yeah I did sales for a while in the funeral home. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I've, had, I've had customers who have done sales and they, they yeah. say it's tough. It's it is so. tough. It's not the call you want to hear. <laughs> okay, now with this one I'm going to I have to tell you a little bit of my background. When I was a young adult and trying to find my way, you know, of course there weren't as many, it didn't seem as many leadership books out there, but someone introduced me to Dr. Wayne Dyer and his and inspirational works and one thing that always stuck out to me and has done so so much so that my kids even learned it very early is that he believed that there were two types of people in the world, ducks and eagles. Ducks are easy to recognize. They think in duck-like ways. They spend all day in the duck pond with their little duck friends. Their responses sound like quack, quack, quack as they try to convince others that they are right. The ducks often tend to quote the rules or policy manual to try to avoid hard questions or as a reason to avoid solving a problem. Ducks are often guilty of the exact thing, same things that they often quack about or complain about. Ducks have no idea that soaring above them are, all the time are eagles. Eagles are people who have found success and soar above conflict. Eagles are optimistic and choose a positive attitude. Eagles are always aware of the duck's existence and the danger that looms within the duck pond. But ducks can be very sneaky. They have a way of luring others to join the duck pond. This includes eagles. Once caught in the pond, eagles will quack along with the ducks and can often find it difficult to leave. Some are able to leave immediately, and others it may take much longer. But most eagles will leave the pond eventually and begin soaring the skies again. The majority of ducks are ducks and rarely change, but I think through learning how to be a leader and teaching them how to become better leaders, you can get the ducks to start acting more like eagles. Um, I have no doubt that all of you in this room are eagles, and you know, and, and I really have enjoyed being around you and learned a lot from it. And um, but you know, when I do come across ducks, the in image of them being a duck helps me sometimes to realize, okay, I need to look for the eagle. Um, <laughs> let me talk to the next person behind you. And my kids have come back to me before. When they were young and we were somewhere and they said, Mom, that person over there is a duck. You know, and we knew exactly what they were talking about. Because they were not, you know, open to doing anything. It was, this is the way we do it. So, I'm really happy to be among all you eagles. And I'm going to turn it over now to Ben. Okay, class, we're going to transform into athletes. Mm. Are you ready? If you want to come up with a team name, we can. Um, Leadership Lions, is that going to work? All right, so, so here's our activity. Um, first and foremost, you cannot ask the three of us any questions. The second rule is that we're going we're gonna to be using this ball, Minnie Mouse at that. Um, so with the Minnie Mouse ball, you can only touch it once per rotation. Okay, so you can't ask us questions, you can only touch it once. <laughs> when can we ask questions? Once it starts or right now? You cannot ask questions. Okay. So, here's what, so you cannot ask questions. You can only touch it once per rotation. And you cannot pass the ball to somebody at your table. So you're going to have to pass it. That's where you become an athlete. But you cannot pass it to somebody at your table. Everybody has to We're going to time you and see how long it takes you to get through the rotation. So, everybody has to we can't ask questions, but after you touch the ball, you either vacate, put your head down, or something so they don't pass the ball to you. There we go. Yeah. All right. Ready? Oh, no. Stop. Stop. Ah. Wait, wait. We're seeing. We're seeing how fast you can get. Ready? Yeah. After you touch it, get away. Ready? 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 Ready?
Oh, we're out of people. Yep, we messed it up. We messed it up. <laughs> <laughs> he has nobody to throw it to. Wait, so we can touch it twice, right? No. No. Oh. You did a clear oh. touch. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody can only touch it once. Yeah. Okay. All right, ready? Here we go. Okay. So we need ready? to rotate. So you want to start with this. Rotate. Yeah, just yeah. rotate it. It does. Uh, we need to even the up. tables out. No, no. 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 We, we can start and end here. Can we check? So they can't even Just go through a whole rotation like this. Three, three. Yes. Go counterclockwise. There we go. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Everyone do That's that group, that group. This, that group. This, 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 no, we yeah. didn't work together with the other? Yeah. Now it does. Now it goes to that one. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Oh. Can I, can it's okay for the drop? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Last one. I'm hard to do. <laughs> oh, I'll catch. You got one more. Okay. Y'all are all out. It's but just us two. Well, this. I mean me. Sorry. There we go. Okay. Everybody done? Yeah. Yeah. You did that in 34 seconds. That's pretty good. That's a second All right. Let's see if we can get it faster. All right. Okay. So it's like. Start here again. It's like. We're going to get here. We're going to sign. We, yeah, we right. Tell me when you're ready. We're going same. Hey, when you're when you're when you're when you done it, do something so you so we know it's yeah. 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 Sit on your hands. Yeah, fold your arms. That'll be good. Fold your arms. Okay. Okay. Ready? Go. Yeah. Oh, too close. Too close. My bad. My bad. Sorry, guys. It's all right. It's okay. Okay. Yeah. I was like, you you reach. So I'm gonna do it one more time. Yeah, we got this. Come on, guys. Yeah. I got this. She said it, and then he had to restate it, so people hear things at different times. Yeah. So here's the thing. So then two people, once you identify that something can be done differently, which we did, we had three people communicate that. 
But did either one of those three move their chairs? I think one of them did. Nate. Nate and Abby moved your chairs about the same time. So you opened it up to where there's not a middle. It was more of a circle. So the idea happened, but the person that's actually committing the move is the one taking the risk. So I drew a line here because I wanted to write the person's name down that was the leader or that took the risk. And that was Nate because he physically moved and Abby because she physically moved her chair. So you can identify where a solution is, but unless you're willing to take the risk, then change is not going to occur. Make sense? And then from there, the last part of, the, uh, of it is the theory of second responder, which just means that basically once somebody takes the risk or takes the leap, then everybody else is willing to do the same thing because it's now okay. All right, so you, you were as a group willing to change the process or challenge the process by identifying you got to figure out a new system. You had a couple of people move some chairs, everybody else kind of opened up and the game became successful and you improved your time uh, almost by half. So you changed, you challenged the process by changing the process, still staying within limits and following the rules. Does that make sense? Now there's um, a couple things that we want to close up with. Uh, you guys did a good job. Some of you are outstanding athletes, or great athletes. Um, <laughs> we, we, like Dr. Hawkins said, we are going to ask you guys to reflect personally on any personal experiences you have with this. So we thought we would close by just briefly sharing one of our personal experiences. Um, you can go. Um, I love the Access Middle School. I'm so great. I absolutely love what I do. I love my kids. It is truly my passion, and that gets me in trouble sometimes uh, because I'm always looking for things to hold their attention. And so one time, I used to teach English, which is awful. Love your English teachers. Um, I was teaching suspense, and I had a, a great idea to have a campfire in my room <laughs> where we would Whoa. eat s'mores, and then they would tell the scary stories they had written. And I'm, um, I'm very like gung ho about things, and that gets me in trouble. I tend to just like jump all in without really fully thinking things through. I'm working on it. So we had a campfire, uh, not an actual fire. We had like the paper layers, but I did have a smoke machine, and I hit it, and I would press the button, and it would scare the kids, and it was going great, y'all, until the fire alarm went off. <laughs> um, and so. That was the time when I challenged the process, and what, I, what I'm conveying to you is, as we obviously all are looking to move into some type of leadership role, my principal in that incident was phenomenal. Um, she could have been very, very mad at me, and it would have been completely justifiable. Um, instead, she said, well, ask me what, um, you know, what made you think it was a good idea to, to do that? And I was like, well, you know, I was just, I was so excited, and I wanted it to feel real, and um, and she said, well, next time, open the door. <laughs> and so I thought that was a really good way for us to remember that as leaders, when we have people who work with us or who are under us, who challenge the process and it kind of blows up in their face, to so just be kind. Yeah. You know, you don't want to punish the creativity. Um, and I thought she did a really good job of not punishing me, but redirecting me. She understood, because my kids talked about it forever to anybody that would listen. Um, <laughs> she did a really good job of taking that creativity and redirecting it. And so I thought that was a, a good example of kind of the opposite end of the spectrum. So. I'm going to tell the story. Um, I was in the process that I challenged was when I was a graphic artist in my first job. Um, we had the boring task, or part of my task as being a new, was that I got to scan in all the book covers that we were going to use in the publications, which was at Ingram in the Creative Services Department. So, <laughs> in scanning these things, um, there were sometimes ones that had to be, um, they were already screen printed in a magazine. And, you know, I, I knew how they did it with the halftone machine, which probably you've never seen one or heard of one. It's, you know, obsolete any longer for the most part. Um, one day, without really thinking about it, because I'd been kind of playing around in Photoshop, I started scanning the, the catalogs instead. And, and I basically took that process and, and shortened it, because they used to have to do like five steps in order to do that one shot. So 
I took the initiative to do it and just um, later, you know, when I had all of them done, they were like, well, how did you do that? You know, and I was like, well, nobody told me I couldn't. So when, I think the point of that is a lot of times asking somebody who's never gone through the process, how would you handle it? How would you do it? What can you do to make this a simpler process? Because sometimes I think people overcomplicate processes. And if you ask a newbie who's never really been told that's not possible, you may find that there's a, a lot of different options. So what I do in my profession is I do pharmaceutical sales to veterinarians or animal health licensed veterinarians. And you're rewarded uh, by certain sales incentives that you're given on a daily, weekly, quarterly basis. Um, and so years ago when I first started in sales, I was trying to figure out how I was going to win this contest of selling so much for a certain company. Okay, so it didn't have to be the biggest product on the shelf or the most expensive product on the shelf, but you just had to sell quantity, right? Um, so I was trying to figure out how I was going to do it when I identified two different things within the same portfolio for this company. So first and foremost, have you ever seen, uh, like, I guess, dog band-aids? It's called bad wrap. Mm -hmm. So it's not an actual band-aid, but it's like a wrap that they, they use it in human health too. So if you give blood or something, or they take oh, blood, they yeah. put a cotton ball and then they wrap that around your arm. I have to wrap it around there. Yeah, so same concept. So this one company made that, or a brand of that. But then they also made this really unique new um, uh, cleanser, antibacterial, all this different, like I guess, so type deal to, to aid in the hospital. So you could protect your animal's wounds or, or places you took blood from, but then you can also like disinfect your hands or a surface or something like that. Um, so both of those went to the same portfolio, but the trick was, was I figured out that I was going to sell those two hand in hand. But what happened was, was that uh, the vet wrap was a new and improved version called No Chew, <coughs> which means it had a nasty ingredient inside the actual bandage material so that they wouldn't lick or bite it off. So I wouldn't tell them that. I would go to them and I would tell them about why it was important to use the bandage. And it was like the, you know, the greatest thing since sliced bread, but then at the same time, they had to wash their hands with this nice moisturizing antibacterial antiseptic shampoo that I had and see the benefits of that. And I won the contest because I sold the most of the no chew bandage and I also sold the most of the cleanser because they saw the benefit of using that too. So I challenged the process of using the two things together versus just trying to go out and do your day to day sales. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. There's a couple things that really resonated, two, say, two lines in, in our um, chapters that really resonated with me, and I think that Lisa did a good job of already pointing one of them out, and I'll end on that, that it says, if people are going to do their best, they must be internally motivated. Um, what gets rewarded, or what gets rewarded gets, yeah, sorry, excuse me. If people want to do their best, they must be internally motivated. When it comes to excellence, it's definitely not what gets rewarded gets done. What is rewarding, it's done. Okay, I thought that was pretty true. I can definitely relate to that in a lot of different aspects of my life. And then the other uh, statement that I highlighted here uh, for myself just disappeared. Give me one second, please. It says, you have to establish relationships, network, be connected, and be out and about. Changing the business as usual environment requires staying in touch with the world around you. I hope that pretty that stood out. And then, last but not least, this is just an interesting tidbit. Um, if you're interested, I've already done it. But if you're interested in the book, on page 183, in this paragraph over here, or in this chart, the very last thing is a free Use the Leadership Challenge mobile tool app. Does it work on Android? Does it work on Android? Do you, have, you already have that? Yeah. So there's a free app out there on leadership that I got from this chapter. I thought it was really neat. So. Thank you.